Thanks for choosing America's Morning Headquarters to get, help you get started and prepared for the day. That's right, the Weather Channel tracking threats from coast to coast. And we certainly have quite a few that we are dealing with here. It seems like this really slowing folks down. The rain piling up just faster than storm drains and the marshes can get rid of it. Flooding has led to a number of rescues from Texas to Louisiana. It's, it really has been a mess. And, and even if you're not flooded like this, there's so much water on the roadways that there's hydroplaning concerns, yeah. accidents are going up. And you know, it's not just the South that is facing the flood threats. If you make it rain, you're going to get some heavy rain. Yep, so get ready for it. Here's the forecast. We'll start you off checking in on a spot like Chicago where we do have that rain for today. We've got it for Thursday night and into Friday as well. Just a really, really raw way to kind of end off our work week. Yeah, temperatures are running above average. And while, you know, we're not super far above average, right. it's above freezing. And so it is going to be all rain. You can see that on the radar right now, all the way up even into Wisconsin and Minnesota, signs of rain on the radar. Yeah, and a lot of fog, as you mentioned here. It's like yeah. almost everyone here is having to deal with some of the fog. Now, some of the recent uh, uh, snow that we've seen is still on the ground in some of these areas. The Great Lakes in the upper Midwest. But now with that still on the ground, things warming up. We're bringing in some rain, foggy conditions, all leading to more of that snow getting a chance to melt. That's going to mean the flood threat does go up. Yeah, I mean, we've had several inches of rain already over the past mm -hmm. week. Uh, you can see that here on this map. And so now this shows you where the new rain is going to be. Everything kind of overlaps. Yeah, so not a good combination here uh, that we'll see over the next few days with more of this rain coming into the picture. And you'll see how this plays out, essentially coming from south to north, really filling in here for our day, getting up towards Chicago for this afternoon. Detroit, you'll get in some of the rain as well, heading on into tonight. Yes, all right. So then Friday, you know, we watch a lot of this push into the northeast here. A little bit of maybe cold enough air. We'll call it sufficient. It's yeah. not really cold, but maybe on that northern edge. But Honestly, overall, it's a fairly mild pattern, which means more rain than anything else. Unfortunately, we're not talking about huge amounts of rain, but yeah, you know, when you're talking snow on the ground, it doesn't take huge amounts to cause some issues. But generally, I'd say up to an inch of rainfall is what is anticipated in the Midwest. And then we've got the Northeast that'll also be getting involved with some of the precipitation. Yeah, too. we'll talk more about this forecast coming up. Greg. Indeed, rain else um, we're dealing with out here in the West. We're going to break right down San Diego, but Portland behind me, you can see, I mean, we've got rain and as far as the eye can see raindrops out there. Uh, that's going to be the case again today with some showers. The rain continues in places like Seattle as well. This is the time of year when we get our rain, so maybe not that surprising that, of course, it's raining yet again, both December and January, both the most number of rainy days on average in Seattle and Portland. You can see it kind of stuck there in the Northwest, but there's another bigger system. So that's really just a small little thing that we're dealing with right now. There's a bigger system looming out here that we want to talk about getting into the weekend. So for now, we've got some showers out there. We'll see temperatures go up a few more degrees. It is dry today around the Bay Area. We've got dry weather all the way down to Southern California, including in San Diego, where you're finally getting to dry out. Look, going through Sunday, though, that system that's looming off the coast will bring us some rainfall, some heavy at times, maybe even causing some flooding concerns. Western Washington down all the way through Oregon into Northern California. California, and then some of that energy and some of that moisture spreads inland too. There'll be some mountain snow. The system itself kind of weakens as it moves inland, but still, you know, moisture and enough cold air will mean that we get a little bit of snow out there. You'll see that at the end of the weekend into early next week. Next week does potentially look very active across the West here. Still a lot of details to be uncovered on that. You know, this forecast is for that storm that's coming in and will affect us through the weekend ending on Sunday. Three to five inches of rain, maybe even five to eight in spots. But you notice that it doesn't go down the coast. We stay dry in Santa Clara at Levi Stadium as the 49ers host the Lions. The I mean, just a beautiful day to sit out in the stadium. Temps hits the low 70s. Take you to the CLE where conditions are foggy, soggy, I, we've wet. I mean, we've got a system that is going to be bringing us soaking rains throughout the Midwest and into the weekend. And before it's all done, there's going to be a changeover from rain to snow. And that'll happen actually not just here in the Midwest, but in the Northeast as well. So Cleveland, we'll use you as the example, child. Uh, you were, what, 52 or 53 degrees yesterday, Cleveland? Um, now we've settled into, well, a little bit cooler, but still kind of murky with the fog. Uh, we're going to 
see that sort of condition hold on through the weekend and then by Saturday night and Sunday. Here comes our next system. This actually allows a little bit of cooler air to come in sufficient enough cold air to get us some snowfall. And as we go from Sunday to Sunday night, we do drop below freezing. Not the only spot that will do that. We've got some chances in the northeast to get into some snow as well. In fact, that's our better chance of getting into snowfall. So this is the forecast getting through the weekend. Let's watch that for you as we watch. Here comes the moisture lifting up at the same time. There's a system kind of dropping down. Down, that's what brings in the cooler air. And so there's enough. I mean, it's going to be a situation where a lot of you start as rain and then you change over to snow as the cooler air comes in at all levels of the atmosphere. This is not a freezing rain or sleet kind of situation. It's mainly a rain changing to snow and that snow could really add up here. Some of the rates could be for the chance of maybe 8 to 12 inches of snow in spots. That's the Euro model. The GFS doesn't have quite as much guys, but either way, we do have some snow chances here with just sufficient enough cold air. Yes. But yeah, this is taking over here for us mm -hmm. this week. A lot of areas. I, if you're across the country and you haven't seen fog, you are in the minority. Well, thankfully. The, anyone who's seen the sun is in the minority. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right. All right, so why are we showing snow depth? It actually plays hand in hand with all of the fog. So this is how much snow is left on the ground right now. And I find it interesting how much snow we've lost this week. Mm -hmm. uh, the line of the warm air, the pattern has changed. Yeah. We've known that. 50% of the U.S. covered in snow, lower 48 anyway. Um, today, it's only 41.7. So we've lost 10% of snow cover. And it's this warm, moist air coming in that's doing it. It is just kind of eating away at the snow out there. You think, okay, how does that happen? Okay, the warm air coming in, you get that. But this also creates a bit more in the way of the fog, which is a very efficient snow eater. Uh, snow doesn't like fog. They don't go very well together. And here's the fog like snow. The fog like uh. snow. <laughs> and here's one of the, some of the ways that you can get fog, right? We have warm, moist air, which we're seeing right now, move into much of the U.S. that has snow on the ground still, and uh, it picks up the moisture and the air cools to condense out, and you get the fog right near the ground. And just a very active condensing actually creates a little heat. Yeah. You get all sciencey on you, the latent heat of condensation. Mm -hmm. And so that makes the snow melt even more. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so we're losing a lot of snow cover out there. And we are. We're getting a lot of fog. It is everywhere. All the areas you see the yellow, dense fog advisors are in place and visibility. Oh I mean, in some cases, it's down to I can't see my hand in front of my face. You know, and that's a good point, Jenny, you mentioned, because if you brought in the same temperature air next to the snowpack because of the sublimation ongoing and you'd have less snow melt, if the air is moist, you don't have that effect right. going on and you can melt more. So the moist, dew points matter. The dew points matter. The higher the dew points easily melt that snow. You might think this is a lot of fog and we, you might have thought that yesterday, which we did. And we, mm -hmm. we showed you this yesterday. There is so much fog out there. We're setting records for the amount of fog advisory. It just Yikes. keeps going up. It just keeps going up. This fog morning, records. about 1,500. <laughs> That's actually, I never thought there was such a record. A fog record. <laughs> we were wondering how they kept the record, that record, but wow. hey, kudos to the National Weather Service offices there. I mean, they do a great job, but it's just amazing just how much fog we have out there. So look, look out your window. You probably can't see right now. Do they now. name fog events? Don't start this, Maybe. Right? I mean, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes. Carl. Oh. Carl, the